Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and today I'm here to show you how to make this cute little patchwork gift bag. I have actually had the tutorial for this and a little PDF to go along with it um, for quite a while now, but it's such a great project to really show you how it goes together, um, especially if you've never made any type of bag before. I feel like this project really lends itself for a video. So I'm going to go step by step and show you how to make this cute little patchwork project bag. Okay, so let's get started making our scrappy patchwork gift bag. As I mentioned in the intro, this is just such a fun little bag to make and it's easy to put together and you can use whatever kind of fabrics you like. I'm using fabrics from our Summer Sweet collection, but you can make these for the holidays or for whatever color scheme you want, would like to. You're gonna start out, you're gonna need 32 two and a half inch squares, and you can get those from a Moda Candy pack, which are the little tiny squares, or you can just use your scraps either way. Then you're gonna need fabric for the upper band, um, the upper band casing. You'll see what we use all these for in a minute. You'll want some ribbon for your ties or you can make your own. I'll show you how you can make your own. Um, you'll need fusible fleece and you'll also need two rectangles for the lining. And I will put all the measurements for the fusible fleece and the lining rectangles and all of these rectangles. I will put those in the description below. Um, so the first thing you're gonna do is sew your patchwork squares together as I have done here. And it doesn't really matter how you press them or whatever, but you're gonna make two 16 patches, one for the front of your bag and one for the back of your bag. The next thing you're going to do is sew your top band, figure out where you want the top of your patchwork piece to be for the front and the back. And you're going to sew a top band section to each one. Okay, so I'll go over to the machine and I'll get this stitched up and come back and show you the next step. Okay, so I sewed my top bands to the top of my patchwork pieces and I did press that seam up toward the band. And the next step you can do is to go ahead and fuse the fusible fleece to the back. Make sure that the fusible part does not touch your iron, that it's together with the wrong side of your patchwork. And I've already fused this one so you can see. But so you'll go ahead and fuse both of those fusible fleece pieces to the back of of the patchwork piece that has been sewn to the top band. And as needed, you can trim that extra fusible fleece. I'll head over to the iron in just a second and I'll fuse that second piece. Um, let me show you one more step you can do right now. You're going to take this casing section, and this is the piece that started out as two and a half inches by seven and a half inches. Um, and you're gonna fold in a quarter of an inch fold it in again, press, and sew that seam. And I've already done it on this one. Okay, so, and you'll do that on both sides. So um, that's the next step. And I'll go over and finish up my second casing and come back and show you the very next step. Okay, so I've got both of the patchwork sections, the band sewn to the top and the fleece sewn. So we can leave these alone for now. I showed you that step to do this, and the next step is to fold it in half, right sides together, and sew a seam, a quarter inch seam right here. Okay, so I've already done that right here. I've got that sewn, um, folded right sides together, and I went ahead and sewed that quarter inch seam. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to want to turn this inside out. And this is actually gonna make like the little casing that the drawstring will go through for the bag. And these are pretty short. I know they do sell special tools and everything for when you are um, 
you know, making a casing like this and turning it. But these are so short, it really doesn't take very long to just flip it inside out with your fingers. And I will finish turning this one inside out and I'll finish this one and then I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, I finished sewing and pressing both of my casings and what I want you to notice that I did was I, I centered that seam on the back um, when I pressed it. So it's, it's like a little tube and this is the tube that your drawstring will be able to go through. But I centered that seam, I pressed them both and the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to center them on this top band. Just, it doesn't have to be exact, just as, as centered as, as you can get it. Um, there's gonna be a seam allowance here and you want to be able to insert the casing and not run into that seam allowance, but you have plenty of space. On mine, and sometimes it's different, but it works out about half an inch from the top, half an inch from the bottom is centered, and then on the sides, just about a little over an in, in between an inch and an inch and an eighth. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna center both of those. And I just take a ruler kind of center it and yeah, it's about about half an inch. A little bit. Anyway, get them both centered. You'll also kind of want to set them together side by side and make sure that they kind of line up. And we're good to go. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to sew this a uh, very close to the edge on the top and the bottom so that you'll still have that casing. Um, that's how you're going to attach it. Um, and be sure to back stitch at the front and the back of both sides of that seam. So after you sew that together, you can actually put these right sides together and sew the sides and the bottoms together. So when I come back, I'll have these sewn on and I'll have this sewn together. And then you're gonna do the same thing with your lining fabric. You're gonna put it right sides together and you're gonna sew two sides and the bottom together. And the only difference on the lining is you're gonna leave about a three inch opening for when you turn your bag inside out. So I'll run over to the machine, I'll sew all this up and I'll come back in and show you the next steps. Okay, so I'm back from the sewing machine again and I, I didn't sew these together yet, I just wanted to show you because you have to do this step before you sew them together so that you can sew those, those seams and um, so that you'll have the little tube on the front of the bag and the little tube on the back of the bag to put your drawstring cord through. Okay, so the next step for this is I will take these over to the sewing machine and I will sew them right sides together on both sides and the bottom. Okay, but the lining I've already sewn right sides together and as I mentioned, I left a three inch opening in, the si in one of the sides. Okay, so this is all sewn together, but I've got this opening right here, and this will be to turn everything right side out when we're done. The next step that you wanna do is we wanna make the bottom of our bag have a little bit of a rounded edge. So we're gonna actually cut out a square from each bottom corner. And that's one thing also you wanna make sure that you don't start your opening too low because we are gonna be taking a little bit of this fabric out. Okay, and so I'm gonna do a one and a half inch square. And so I'm going to line up one and a half, one and a half inches that way and one and a half inches this way. And I'm just gonna cut out that little square of fabric. If you want, you can draw a line and do it with scissors. Okay, and now I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to cut that little square out. Okay, 
And then what we're going to do with these is this is going to allow us to make the, the bottom of the bag. You're going to separate those two pieces. You're going to match the seams and you can either press them open or press, or press them to one side. And you're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam there and you're going to do the same thing on the other side and sew a quarter of an inch seam there. And so you'll make that and it'll give us kind of a little flat bottom for our bag. So I'm going to go over to the sewing machine, I'm going to sew these up and then I'm going to do the same thing with my outer bag. Okay, so we are getting close to being done. I have sewn those seams where I took out the little squares in each of the corners and I do have that opening and so at this point you're going to turn your lining right side out and just kind of push all those edges out. So this is going to be the inside of your bag and we, I went ahead and sewed the bag right sides together so I've got the same kind of thing with that but we're going to leave it like this and we're going to put the lining inside the bag. Okay, so the right side of the lining is going to be together with the right side of our bag. And we're going to put that inside of the bag. And then what we're going to do is we are going to put all of these edges together. I'm going to use Wonder Clips because they work so well. And we're going to get everything, all of the edges even, and clip them together with Wonder Clips. Okay, so I'm going to clip this together with the Wonder Clips and I just put them every inch or so. It's, it's much easier than using pins. If you're going to make any type of bags or um, placemats, any kind of projects like this, the Wonder Clips are really the best tool to use. We're just going to make sure all of these top edges match up and are together. And then we're going to sew a quarter inch seam around the entire top of the bag. And remember that we left that opening in the bag lining so um, after we sew that seam we'll be able to turn it inside out. Okay, so I've, I've just put all of those top edges together with the Wonder Clips. Now I'm going to go and I'm just going to sew a quarter inch seam right there. Okay, so I'm back from the sewing machine. You can see I've sewn that quarter inch seam all the way around the top of the bag. And now to turn it inside out, I'm going to go to that opening that I left in the lining. And I'm just going to start pushing the bag through that opening. And it's pretty simple. We don't have very much to get through there. And so anyway, once it all is through the opening. And what I usually do is I usually go through that opening, if I can find it, to kind of press out the bottoms of the patchwork bag so I can just get my hands in there and press the bottom out on both sides. Okay, and then what you're going to want to do is kind of just start pushing your lining back inside. And I use the same fabric for my lining as I did for the um, top band. And I did that for a reason because that way it just kind of looks a little better. But we're going to press this seam. I'm going to take it over to the iron and I'm going to press that down all the way around the top edge so that it will have a nice clean finished look. And if you want you can even do an edge stitch or a top stitch after you press that. So I'm going to go do that and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to slip stitch that seam together where I have that opening. I'm just going to fold it in and you can do it by hand. It's never going to show so you can actually just do it by machine too and, and just kind of sew those edges together. So I'll go over to the machine, I'll sew those together, I'll press it all up and then we'll be ready to put the drawstring in. 
Okay, I've got it all sewn. I closed up the opening on the lining and I did go ahead and top stitch a quarter of an inch away from the top after I press that. Um, all we have left is to insert our drawstrings. And I, you can use ribbon or the Moda Twill Tape that comes on the outside of Fat Quarter Bundles. I've used that before. You can basically um, use those to make it easier, but if you want to make your own drawstrings, I'm going to show you what to do. So you're going to take your rectangle of fabric and you are going to fold in, let's see, I'll be able to figure it out from this one, just a little bit on each end and you're going to fold it in again and you're going to sew you can sew or you don't have to sew. I'll show you in a minute why you don't really need to sew. But you're going to press those seams on both ends and then you're going to press it in half and once you get that pressed you're actually going to press to the middle and then you're going to fold it again and so it'll come out this width. So I'll go do that pressing and then once you get it like this you're just going to sew all the way around the entire strip to encase it so that it doesn't come out. But I will go make this one, so fold in both ends, press, fold in half just to give you a crease line, and then you'll know that that's the line that you fold your sides to and, and stitch around the whole thing. So I'll go make my other strap and then I'll come back and show you how to insert the straps in your bag. Okay, so I've got both of the casing, the drawstrings made. I'm going to show you how you do this because it's a little bit different, um, but it's kind of a, a cool thing. So I use a safety pin to thread it through. And you're going to begin on, um, on the front side of your bag. And I don't know if it even matters which is the front. I like all of these fabrics. So, but you're going to begin on the left side of the front of your bag and you're gonna thread that through the casing just by pulling, and you'll be able to feel the safety pin in there. And you're gonna put it all the way through this front. Okay. And then you're going to continue and you're going to feed it all the way through the back casing. Okay, and now what you're going to do is you're actually going to feed it through this front casing again and have it come out on the other side from where you started. And I just kind of watch the other end and make sure it doesn't get pulled through. Okay, so we've got both of the um, both ends. Make sure that they're both sticking out. Now we're going to do the same thing with the other casing but we're going to start on the back of the bag this time. And it's a little bit um, more work. It is easier if you use a thin ribbon and that's why if you make your own drawstrings you won't need to interface them or anything. But basically the first, case, the first drawstring that you ran through is going to stay in place while you work this one through. We're just doing the same thing that we did with the first one. This really does make such a cute little bag. When I can see the safety pin, I'll usually just pull it through. And then the same thing, we're gonna go through that last side and we're going to come out over on this side so we'll have two casing ends on each side of our bag. So this is the last, last 
travel. Okay, and I can see the end. And just kind of finagle those. So you're going to have two casings ends on each side. You can take that safety pin out now. And you can kind of like see that when you pull on them, it really closes the bag and makes it look super cute. What I like to do at this point is tie a little knot in the end so that you don't have to worry about these casings ever going through, back through. So see, I just tied a little knot in that side and then I'll do the same thing over here. And you would want to do the same thing if you were working with ribbon um, to keep it from feeding back through. But this, this will prevent that because once you tie the knot, it won't be able to slip back through that casing. Okay, so now we've got the two little knots. Now you can open your bag and you can, you can get it all the way open. And as you can tell, like the knots will keep it from going through. You can use this to put a fun gift in. It's great for a little bag for kids. It's um, really fun at Christmas time. You could even live it, leave it partway open and put, you know, sparkling cider in there and some treats. Um, you could have stuff sticking out and just pull the drawstring just as much as you need it to to keep your contents enclosed. But it's just really a fun little gift bag that you can make with your scraps. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial for the scrappy patchwork little patchwork bag. Um, this is just a fun thing that I've been making for several years and I hope you enjoyed the step by step. I feel like that might have made it a little bit easier for those of you who haven't done a lot of bag sewing or even if you have, it's, it's kind of tricky a couple places at the end. I will be sure to link all of the information that you need in the description below so that you can get your fabrics and everything cut the proper sizes before beginning and I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and thanks so much for stopping by.